Hey guys, AJ with Relentless Racing. Welcome back to the channel. Well, I've got a super detailed and kind of a long video, but I think this is an important topic that a lot of people have questions about. Today, I'm gonna to be removing the dreaded gas tank from the MR2 Spider. You would remove the gas tank to possibly install the hard dog roll bar or change out your shifter cables. And in my case, I'm gonna be switching out the parking brake cables. These are the parking brake cables right here. And these are definitely the culprits. You can see it right here. This thing's kinked pretty tight. And what happens is it'll bind in this corner and it'll actually wear. And theoretically, if this thing were new, you should be able to push and pull this cable. I can't push and pull this cable at all. Look, that other side, this other side isn't moving a bit. So that just means that it is completely seized on the inside. So these cables are definitely fried. So let's get started. The MR2 Spider comes apart pretty easily on the inside. So I'm gonna be taking out the luggage compartments and the seats and obviously the center console to access the parking brake cables. I know that there are a lot of videos on this, but I'm just gonna go over half of the car so everyone can see how I go about doing it and point out some stuff that I've learned along the way. All right, here we go. Removing the front seat is pretty simple. 14 millimeter socket takes off the two bolts in the front. Slide the front seat forward and then rock it to its foremost position. Here are the two bolts in the rear. These are a 14 millimeter socket and typically these are covered with plastic covers. If they have plastic covers on them, just rip them off. They come off pretty easily. Now slide the seat all the way back again. And here's where a lot of people forget some stuff. There is a connector under here. Let's go check it out. By lifting the front of the seat, it will reveal a connector. This is not the factory connector, but on mine, the factory connector was stuck and I couldn't get it apart. So I ended up pulling it apart. And that wasn't a problem because I just replaced it with this Deutsch DTM three prong connector. And all you do have to do to take this one apart, same with the OEM connector, is push this little button right here push this and it separates to remove the door sill protector just grab in the back over here and pull straight up and it kind of rotates like this way and then it pops out now we're going to remove this piece right here and this piece covers the seat belt you can see it right here and my next shot i'm going to zoom into these guys so you can see the clips and how they come out so here's the close-up you can see the seat belt right here and we have two little clips here that we need to get out to get these clips out all you have to do is take a little tool, it could be a little screwdriver, what have you, and you push the centers down. You'll see that they'll pop like that. Pop. Then I take a tack puller like this and I stick it underneath here and I pick it up just like that. You can see it go under here, pick it up, and now they're open. Now you're going to use the really expensive pry tools, these guys right here. I grab down towards the bottom, kind of give it a little pull like this, and there she goes. And on the back of this, you can see that there are clips. There's one here. There's another clip down here. And they have these white clips right here. So you could tell that the piece needs to come out in this direction, pull towards you. Again, use expensive pry tools. With this panel pulled aside, now I'm going to open the luggage container. And you can see that there are one, two, three, four, five bolts that require a 10 millimeter socket to get them out. We're just gonna remove those really quickly here. The door comes off. And then before we could remove this guy, we need to remove this panel right here. So I'm gonna bring us in a little closer so you can see how this thing comes out. So here's an additional panel right here. To get it out, there's a little clip in here. All you have to do is you just pull this centerpiece out like that, you'll hear it click and pull this one over here. And then this piece just dumps right out. But what most people don't realize is sometimes they break it because it is attached in the back to this panel. So here's the triangle piece. And once you pull out this clip here and this one down here, you're going to want to flick it out like that. There's a little clip right there. Check out that little clip. And that's what goes, this clip right here goes into this hole right here. So just careful when you're pulling this thing out so that way you don't break that little clip. So now repeat this process on the right side. Remove the seat, the door seal, the seat belt cover, and the luggage compartment on the right hand side. So here's what the car looks like now with the left side of the luggage trays out. And as we sweep over to the right, 
you could see the right side of the vehicle that is the right side the luggage trays are out as well the only difference is the bolts go in horizontally as opposed to vertically so there'll be two extra ones right in here but that's what it looks like with the luggage trays out of the vehicle to get the center console out push it into first gear pick this guy up just a little bit and then you're going to remove two screws with a phillips down here and they're two on the other side just like that and pull out this little plastic guy right here it just snaps right out and then take off the shifter knob and then you're going to rotate this and push it up forward like this and come towards the driver's side or whatever side this is for your part of the country and keep in mind there's a wire attached here so don't take it too far and just put this guy down for a second and then we'll work on the other side of this this is the e-brake or the parking brake and there are two nuts right here the top one is a locking nut and this is the one that adjusts the tension in the parking brake cables so it has one cable that goes to here and then there's a connector which connects both of them these are the two parking brake cables right here but let's remove this thing first 10 millimeter socket that takes that one off you can take the lock nut off and then you could take a ratchet and you could loosen this guy I'm gonna loosen it using my gun and you can see there's hardly any thread at the top right there. So just for reference, that's the left side of the vehicle. And then you can see the seatbelt right there. And this is where the luggage container was. Let's remove all these nuts using a 12 millimeter socket. So you can pull this guy up. You need to release this connector right here. Just push this button right here. And that'll release it now if you want to remove this metal piece out you can but it's attached to this little connector right here so you can disconnect this connector and it'll it'll come right out you have to release it from the bottom here you can squeeze it with a pair of needle nose pliers and that thing will pop out but I don't think you necessarily have to remove it and then let's remove this guy right here this guy just pops out like that and then we want to remove two cables now if this is too cumbersome for you remove the plate and you could also dislodge this guy it's only held in by this nut right here there's that nut and then on the other side of it there are two nuts over there you can see both of them one two so this is an evap unit i think it is anyway anyhow i unbolted it just like i showed you guys you can flip it up like this and you need to remove this cable and this cable right here. To, to remove this big one, you kind of have to apply pressure here and on the direct opposite side of it and squeeze it. And that releases it. You can see it move right there and that pops it off. This is a fuel line and it has, you have to squeeze this section here and on the opposite side. So I'm gonna have to rotate it around so that way I can reach it. That's what has to remove this guy right here. You have to squeeze on this side and on this side of it. You can kind of see it right there. You have to squeeze right there. Try one more time. There, I got it loose. This is what you have to squeeze, these two right here. So those are the only two you have to release off of there. I did manage to take off that plastic piece on the bottom right here, but you don't have to remove any other cables for these two right here. Okay, let's go to the other side. Right hand side of the vehicle. I use a panel popper, kind of reach underneath here. There's only black butyl hanging onto this thing. So black butyl is a low contact adhesive. They use it on windshields a lot. You can kind of see how this thing pops open, pops open like that. Let's do this connector and this one. We could leave this one on and you have to use a little orange guy right over here to pop that thing out. Okay, let's take out this little bracket. That's an eight millimeter little tiny screw right there. Try not to drop that thing like I just did. Here's a little bracket just comes right out. And now you're gonna be tempted to remove this, but you don't have to remove that. You just wanna remove this guy right here. Pull a little tab, slides right out. This guy is always a pain in the butt. So what I do is I use my panel popper. You can use this thing for leverage on the side. There it goes. And then you can pull it up. Then we gotta remove this little orange clip right here. So to remove this orange clip, I 
push it with my finger here. My finger right there, and then I use my little awl, and I'm gonna push this guy up just a little bit, like that. And then, I wanna be careful not to lose it because it, it might go flying. So push it all the way out to here. And then to get it out, you're gonna have to squeeze this side or this side, whichever. So let's squeeze one side like this. I'm squeezing one side with my awl, and then that'll allow it to pop out. There's that little orange clip. Then this guy, wiggle, 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 and pull it up. Pulls up just like that. And that thing is really, so I'll just put that kind of like that. And now, we just gotta release the crap off the bottom, and then we're ready to roll. So one of the things that you need to add on both sides of the vehicle, take off and put on, is this little plastic guy right here. There is an M61, which is a 10 millimeter head. And you just kind of stick that guy right in here. Goes onto one of the little brackets that, for the coolant line. And then the rest of the places that are on here, you actually put on with some push pins. So you could either use a 6.3 millimeter or 6.4 Christmas tree, which is what I'm using right here, this is the Christmas tree. And just push that guy in there. And then there's one on each side that go on one right here. And one over here. So these are typically brittle, so I just replace them with some new ones. Aftermarket, give that a little bit of torque. And then you're all set. Now let's go over what we have to release on the front of the tank. So I'm in the middle of the car. This is the left side of the vehicle. This is the gas tank right here. This is the very front of it. And this is a coolant line right here. So just to give you guys some orientation, you can see that here's where the transmission is, right, right here. And you can see the rear axle right there. So again, I'm in the, under the middle of the car. So we need to release this bracket right here. You're gonna release this bolt right here. That's a 10 millimeter socket. I also release this with a Phillips. There's a small plastic bracket right here. You've got to slip the tube out of that. And as we move across, here's the center of the vehicle and you can see lots of the tubes going up. So there's a couple brackets here. These are for the AC. You got to release this bracket right here. Uh, there's a little bracket right here you need to release. And you could kind of see for orientation, that is the bolt. That right there is the bolt for the seats on the tunnel. And then there's another little bracket right in here. You can kind of see it. Let me rotate the light just a little bit. There's a bracket right here, kind of, it's all in one type of a bracket right there. Here's that other one that I was just showing. And that one goes up to a bigger piece as well. You can kind of see it right there. Rotate the light, there it is. So that's right there. And here's the center piece right here. And we have to get rid of this bracket right here. Just take that one off briefly. There's another bracket right here. You don't have to take it off, but you want to remove these pipes out of there so that way they can move around. Again, these are the coolant pipes. And we're moving over to the right side of the vehicle. Here is another bracket, just like on the other side. This is a 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter socket will take that off. And then right in here, you got to take a Phillips off so you can separate these, these tubes right there. And those are the, the AC tubes. And if you follow that back just a little bit, there's one other bracket it's right here, right there. And again, it's another Phillips. So those are all the things that are on the front of, front and around the gas tank that you need to remove. That's the right side of the vehicle. And you can see the front bolt right there. That's the one on the right side. And as we go across, you can see underneath the tube right there, that's the one on the left side of the vehicle for the front of the gas tank. And that's pretty much all you have to remove over there. And then the bolts that are in the rear of the tank are right in line, just right behind this guy, just in, in that direction towards the rear. Literally like right over there, right over in here is where, right up in here is where the rear bolt is. Okay, I'm under the left side of the car. This is the actual, here's the transmission. And you can see this is the back of the gas tank and we want to release this guy this is the intake for the gas so the filler goes up this tube just a little bit so we want to release here and we also want to release 
these two lines right here, this one and this one right here. So these two little guys right here, they're attached to this, this white bracket right there. So those two guys right there, you can see that they go down into here. So just another th or point for orientation. This is the front motor mount. It's right above it. And again, it's that one and that one. And after some quick finagling, we got the gas filler tube off. And then if you look up into here, you notice that these two tubes are disconnected from those two lines right there. Also right around the gas filler tube, I'm gonna release this bracket right here. This is the, a coolant line. And there's also a brace behind here, this guy right here, that bolt and that bolt. And that's what hangs onto this. And so that'll allow this coolant line to move more freely because check out the coolant line. The coolant line is attached and I think I wanna maneuver that a little bit so that way I can get the tank down a little bit. So now we've removed this. This guy's loose, and look how loose this is. Now I can move this thing around to get it out of the way so I don't have to mess around with the tank getting out of the way. Here's the view of my jack. I'm laying underneath the bottom of the car, facing forward. Here is the front engine mount. You can kind of see how it's supporting the tank. And now I'm gonna release the bolts and slowly lower her down. Okay, I'm laying underneath the car again. Here's the oil pan. I'm on the right side of the car. And check it out. You can see the edge of the gas tank right here. This is the gas tank. Here are some of the AC lines. And look, all you gotta do is push these AC lines up and around the tank. What I did was I pushed the tank all the way over to that side just a little bit so I can get these guys out. Now I can lower it a little bit and I can bring the tank kind of down like this and then it'll drop right out because there's some coolant lines over there that I need to avoid. So let's go look at that side and I'll show you in a minute. I'm on the left side this time looking to the front of the car. This is the front engine mount. Here's the gas tank, the gas filler, and you can see that this coolant line that I'm messing around with here it's kind of in the way of the tank. So now as I bring the tank down a little bit, I'm going to shove the tank that way over to the right side. So that way this thing will drop right out. So I'm going to lower it just a tiny bit. I lower it a little bit. Now I'm going to shove the tank, shove the tank over to the, to the right side. Okay, so now check it out. We can almost clear this. Okay, there's the front cleared out already. She's almost ready to come down. All right, let me do this with two hands and I'll show you guys after I'm finished. But I'm just gonna push the tank that way over to the right hand side. And it'll clear this line and then we're out. Here's the filler and you can see that the tank is lowered a little bit. And check out this cooling line right here. The coolant line is clear of the tank now. So now, what I gotta do is just lower the tank. She's lowering away. She's coming down. And that's all you gotta do to get the tank down. Okay, so for reference, we are on the right side of the vehicle. Here's the axle, and we're on the inside of the car looking out. So that is the hub, and here you have the top of the caliper. And actually, this guy right here, this is actually our, our parking brake cable. There's a little clip right here that pops out. I'll show you how to take that out. But let me just back out a little bit so you can see where it goes. This little guy right here, that's the oil pan. And you can see the cable, which is this guy right here. It goes along right here. And then there's a little attachment point right here. And then as we go along, those are AC cables. These are the AC cables that are in the way, kind of that you can see. And then back here, this black guy right here, this is our cable that we're gonna replace. So this pocket right in here is where the gas tank would sit. And you can see our cable going right here. There's one attachment point here and it goes along. One more attachment point over here. And then that is the center of the vehicle and it breaks into the vehicle. And that's where it goes into the car and where it attaches to the parking brake lever. So to remove this little car pin, I just grab it right here with some needle nose pliers push it away from that other pin and then 
pull it out. Then pop out this guy, just like this. It might be a little bit tight because there might be some tension on it. And just grab what you need on those pliers, pop it out. And then to get this clip off, just grab your needle those pliers, grab it on the end right here, and wiggle, wiggle. To get this guy out of this bracket right in here, you could just take it and wiggle it and push it in that direction. And there she goes. And then she'll slide out sideways. Now, just follow the cable and each of its attachment points, push these AC lines out of the way, 12 millimeter socket. Continue to follow the line. We're on the inside of the vehicle again. Here is the parking brake lever. And here's the little clamp that holds on to the line. 10 millimeter socket. Take that guy out. And so now we're going to stretch this cable over here. Pop that thing around. Pull the line around so that way the line will release through there. And then we're going to push that up. You have to rotate the line so that way it can come up. And then that ball, this little metal piece comes out give it a little wiggle and that's how it pops out okay i'm back on the underside of the vehicle over this direction over here is the right side this is the tranny tunnel that goes up through the center of the vehicle that has all the coolant lines and this is area right here is where the gas tanks come in this is our parking brake cable all you do is give it a little yank and it comes right out that's the other end that we were just working on so now our cable is completely free so just yank it out of there, and look, there it is. The whole cable is right here, all the way to the very end, completely released. Here's what the cable looks like it when it comes from the dealership. On one of these brackets, there is an R stamped on it. There it is right there. So on the left side cable, it has an L on it, and the right side one has a little R on it. So just keep that in mind, so don't worry about mixing them up. Let's go put it in the car. Okay, so I'm under the car. You can see the oil pan here, and I'm looking out. That's the front, and this is, that is the right side of the vehicle. So here's the oil pan, here's the oil filter. You can see the AC hoses right here. So I have my new parking brake cable. Well, so I'm gonna take this end, which is the one that goes into the car, and I'm gonna put it above, again, above the AC lines, and I'm gonna push it over just like that. Because all that stuff attaches over there. Remember, there's two attachments over there. And then I'm just going to set it just like that. And then I'll start working on the caliper side of this cable. This is the caliper side. And this guy goes way over there. So I'm obviously at the rear caliper. And this is the right side. And I am under the vehicle looking out. Here's your axle right here. So here is our connection point. So I'm going to bring up my cable. And I'm going to rotate the cable till I see the white lines that are on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this clevis and I'm going to take the pin and I'm going to line it. And I'm going to put this on first. So now that's attached. And then I'm going to put the cotter pin in there. So take your cotter pin and your needle nose pliers. You can kind of see it right there. Put the end through this side and the back through there. And I stretch it and slide it on. So there's a close up of what the cotter pin is supposed to look like. There we go, nice and focused. That's what it should look like. Let me rotate it around. That's what it should look like. Just like that. Now we're gonna slide this like this, push it in like that. And then we're gonna take our C-clip and we're gonna push this thing into here just like this. Usually I like to hit this with a little hammer or something like that, or you can just take your needle nose pliers and just make sure that that thing is completely engaged. Just push it in like that. And here's my hammer method. I just kind of give it a couple taps like this, just to make sure that that thing is completely engaged. And as we go down the line just a little bit, here's our next connection point. You can kind of see this little brace that's on here. And notice the little mark right there. And so what happens is this guy likes to start, it wants to rotate kind of like that. And that's how it actually attaches. So just push the AC lines out of the way, get your hand up in there and then start this little bolt in here. Now we're gonna follow the cable behind the AC lines. These are the two AC lines right here. So you're gonna connect right over there, and then there's another one over there. And then it goes back into the vehicle in that hole right there. And you can see that there's a little uh, hanger mark right in there, or a little protrusion to help us 
put the bracket in the right spot so it doesn't rotate. So now we're going to bend this cable in towards here, see if we can't get lucky and get it into the cabin. I think we made it into the cabin right there. Here we are inside the vehicle again, and I'm just checking if the cable made it through. The cable made it through. Sometimes if you don't thread it properly, it'll end up in this chamber over here. So make sure it gets threaded in properly. And now let's go back under, fix the grommet, and then we'll come back in here and we'll attach this guy to this little piece right here. I'm under the vehicle again, and this is the grommet. So if you just show a little finesse, you could pop this guy right in here. Take your time with it. Just make sure that it is installed properly. So that way it keeps dirt and grime out of the vehicle. Okay, we're back on the inside. Here's the cable. Now obviously this little metal piece has to go in through here and then we got to slip it through this. The line has to go through here and around through there like that. Okay, rotate. Almost got it. There it goes. And now she's in. And then put this in like this, in the right position. Put the little lock piece on like that. M6 by one bolt right here. And obviously you'll need to torque that thing properly, but that's what it looks like. So we just did the right hand side parking brake cable. All you have to do is repeat this on the left side and it's the exact same thing. Before we adjust the parking brake lever, we need to put the car back together so that way it can run. And then we're gonna follow the OEM service manual instructions to adjust the parking lever. So we're in the car again. You are gonna take the lock nut off and then this is the adjusting nut. So we're gonna loosen the adjusting nut until the parking brake cranks hit the stopper back on the caliper. Okay, so here is, this is the left rear wheel or the rotor. And then I'm gonna slide into over here and you can kind of see this cable. This is the parking brake cable. We wanna make sure that that thing you loosen the cable until this thing touches the pin. So we're at that right location right now. So if not, you want to loosen it up because sometimes it'll be sitting like that. And you want, that's the crank, this guy right here. That is the stopper. So just kind of loosen the cable until it relaxes right there. And you have to do that for both sides, make sure both sides are looking good. So according to the directions, now it reads to start the engine and to press the brake pedal with the thread force at about 110 pounds for 10 times. Then we tighten the adjusting nut until the cable has no looseness. Pull the braking, pull the parking brake lever up strongly once, release the parking brake lever, turn the adjusting nut until the lever travel is correct, tighten the lock bolt down. All right, so let's start her up. So it's a good sign when it starts. And we're gonna give it 10 good pumps. So that way I get some force, I'm gonna lean back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Okay, so here we are right now. Here's the adjusting nut. Here's the cable. You can see there's a tiny bit of looseness in it. So let's see if we can't get rid of some of that. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a 10 millimeter socket, stick it over the top of this guy, and gonna tighten this thing down. Still a little bit of looseness in there. It's not super tight. Get a little bit more. Let's see what happens when we tighten a little bit more. All right, that feels pretty good. So now it tells us to pull the parking lever strongly once and then release it. So let's give it some Kung Fu grip. We pulled it once, then we release it. Turn the adjusting nut until the lever travel is correct and then tighten the lock nut. Okay, so the spec is five to eight clicks if you're pulling with 44 some odd pounds of pressure. So, let's see here. Uh, I'm not so sure how many that was. That was eight actually. Let's just tighten it down just a little bit more. was five. That was a lot. So that feels pretty good right there. So here's the lock nut. So I'm just going to thread that guy on here first. I'm going to take a 10 millimeter wrench, hold her like this and give it her a little torque. 
And that's it. So now to test this, I'm just gonna roll the vehicle up onto an incline, hold it on the brakes, put it in neutral, set the parking brake, and let go and see if the whole vehicle holds. So I'm just in my driveway and it seems to be working fine. Now that install wasn't too bad. So guys, I'm gonna continue on working on my MR2 Spider, but before I go, please don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. I'm on Instagram as Relentless Racing. You can also see me on YouTube as AJ Hockius. This is AJ with Relentless Racing. Stay relentless and I'll see you on the track.